I think for most of us, we had to kind of grow up and see that our parents, you know, as you all have mentioned, they, um, you know, they were still kind of adapting to this new environment. Um, you know, again, immigrant background, everything else like that. A new culture, adapting to, um, you know, different things they were seeing, trying to balance, you know, multiple children, because obviously uh, many of us come from um, homes where there's lots of kids. That, that's just like a norm for us growing up. Um, but I think now that we're adults, it's always nice to see how those relationships evolve. Because like now my mom is like one of my best friends. Like she, like I, like I mentioned earlier, she calls me for everything, um, you know, tells me everything, like even things I don't want to hear. <laughs> so it's like the convers- the dynamics of the relationship change as you grow older, because now they see you as an equal, if you want to call it that. I mean, of course, they're still going to see you as a child first, but they're able to kind of look at you in a way that, you know, I did well with my kid, my kids are grown up now, and now I can have that meaningful relationship. And I think for us too, we can also, um, maybe the relationship we didn't have growing up, we're able to kind of foster it now that we're adults with our parents. So that kind of switches over perfectly to this question. Uh, what do you value most about your parents or elders now that you're an adult um, with your own children or just in general? And is there anything you would like to say to your parents? So um, again, we encourage our viewers to uh, contribute on the Slido panelists as well. Um, so let's see, Curtis, if you can just kind of answer first, like what would just one thing that you value the most about maybe your upbringing, um, and then how how you're passing that on, you know, with your son now, and maybe one word for your parents that you would like to tell them. Um, so I grew up with my mom, so I was a single it was a single mother household for me. I knew my father, he was, um, I still talk to him to this day, but he just, I just didn't live with him um, due to their parental differences and uh, relationship differences. So I guess with that experience for me, um, my experience of my mom was really built on, you know, working and providing and, you know, lim- it was which left limited time for us and things of that nature. So I, I guess from that relationship and that understanding, it, it put me more in tune of how important time is now with my children um my son for right now but hopefully children in the future um you know how going to those uh, basketball games or spending time with te- actually to teach him something or you know doing things that he's interested in how important that is and because they don't they don't see you working they don't see the money they don't see the value of those things they see when you're there for them so i, I remember uh watching an interview by to- Toby Ngwe. If y'all know, he's uh, he's an up-and-coming rapper. And he talked about, you can fake it um, like you care, but you can't fake it like you're there. So I want to make sure that I'm there for my son and not just saying that I have to provide, I have to provide, I have to go out and work. I want to make sure I'm there. So, I mean, one word for my parents is that I guess I, I value your time more than your money. So... Um, definitely resilience. Um, they, in as much as we might sometimes think they were too harsh, you know, or they, they helped us to be strong, you know, maybe stronger than we needed to be sometimes, but, (laughs) but I want to say that it helped me greatly when I came here because it's very hard to break. It's very hard to break an African, um, immigrant you know because we we're you know you know what your parents are already gonna say like does that person have to it you know those kind of things and it's funny to hear but in our head somewhere we take that and it's like yeah i can i can push i can keep regardless of the obstacles um and so for me even though you know there, there are tweaks here and there that i feel that i can apply to my kids to hopefully make it better but i feel like that firmness um that push is really the foundation of you know any anything i've overcome you know when i was i had to be away from them and stand on my own so for me definitely resilience um, resilience they like I value their unbreakable spirit I don't even think they knew that they were wrong <laughs> I don't think they did no but I really um, I really appreciate the sacrifices that my parents made especially now that I am an adult and just to imagine that they left the country without their parents 
and without any guidance day to day and having to just rely on what they knew and a lot of times what they knew wasn't always the best however they didn't really have parents that had I guess were able to unpack what was good and what wasn't good in their own training there were those conversations weren't um didn't come up so how do you correct something that you haven't identified is is wrong right so I I do extend a lot of grace to my uh, parents and I appreciate just keeping me alive and keeping my siblings alive and we, there's eight of us not to, uh, in, in a foreign country that the type of sacrifices um, that they made the type of money that was spent the type of oh my goodness oh my goodness yet they yet they are it's, it's really how you carry your burdens, right? And that's one thing I did learn from them. If you perceive your burdens as heavy, they will feel heavy and they will look heavy on you. If you perceive it as in like, you know what, I just have to do what I have to do, then you will look like you're not carrying anything. And I and Akira knows my parents and I will say that I am I'm blessed to have them. I'm blessed to see them stands tall and strong and thank God that we're all doing relatively well considering all factors. So thank you. <laughs> I guess the older you get, <laughs> the more valuable you really start. The closer you get to the old people, you start valuing, oh yes, I know something, I'm worth something. You know, one of the one of the one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard is that guess what? Your soul doesn't never feels old. Isn't that a beautiful feeling? That doesn't matter if you're seven years old. You're not going to feel any different than when you felt when you were 15 years old. Now the body may be feeling different, <laughs> but the soul will stay beautiful and will stay hopeful and will stay thriving until its last uh, moment on this earth. So, I think the you know the, the inspiration that's you know um, knowing where you know going up the stations of life. And, um, you know, all of a sudden seeing that the rules are not reversed and you're the one, you know, being the strict and stringent one. You're the one in a position where you, when you, the last time you heard that conversation, it was being said and you were on the other side and, oh my goodness, that's what they meant, you know? And I think with every re revelation that we get as we grow older, the more we, um, the more we begin to appreciate our parents, understand the sacrifice, and um, you know, I guess you know, get, stay more motivated to even do, you know, pay it forward to our children, right, so that they can um, have a much better life than we had. I do want to add to that, which you know, just everyone has been saying pretty much the same thing. Um, you know, again, just that immigrant experience, there were just so many challenges that our parents faced. Obviously, some we may never know because, you know, we had the privilege of being brought up um, or growing up in this kind of environment. So we didn't see things in a way that they uh, saw it or experienced it. Um, so definitely that resilience, um, that pride in, you know, who you are as a people. Um, you know, again, Tamaka knows this, like going to those functions, you know, seeing and learning about your uh, cultural heritage. It was like a, like not being in the village, but it kind of gave you that feeling of growing up back home, if, you know, as close as they could make it, you know, being able to see, you know, different parts of your culture, like, you know, see like masquerades and, um, you know, the breaking of like, so many things that we were um, taught in a special way, like outside of the home and the kind of community center kind of gathering um, with other people within the community. Um, so yeah, just, you know, I would say that resilience is definitely one big one, you know, coming from that kind of background, having to, you know, sacrifice so much, being away from uh, your family, like uh, one of you have mentioned. So, you know, definitely appreciate them for all that they did for us. And, you know, obviously we're still alive, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I will say one thing that, you know, you know, jokes aside, you know, as I was kind of looking up some material, like with some of the different 
um, people. I know like one thing that we like to do is make fun of, you know, our parents and make fun of the, the things they say, how they say things and how they kind of respond to different things when we're growing up. So in as much as like we laugh at those things and sometimes they can be kind of harmful, like watching those videos and seeing them say certain things like, you know, in a way it kind of built us, you know, built character to some extent. Um, I'm not saying that's the best approach, obviously, but you know, that's what they knew to do. And <clears throat> it's up to us at this point in our lives to kind of figure out what things um, we can continue on with and what things we can just kind of push to the side as it relates to raising the next generation.